In today's video, I'm going to be showing you a 4D grandfather clock. And so the part of it that's 4D that's move is the pendulum that swings back and forth and there's a little bead underneath the nail. So you can just kind of slide a different finger underneath that one and it just sways back and forth, which I absolutely love. And if you're playing with this nail, if you're me at least, you can't help but think tick tock, tick tock the whole time you're playing with it. I really love this. I, if you guys like clock designs too, I mean, I am absolutely in, in love with them. So I have a couple different ones in the past. I have a little alarm clock nail and then I have some 40 clocks that have hands moving that I've done for New Year's and I'll put any clock themed video in the description box below if you are clock obsessed. So I hope you love this one and don't forget to click subscribe to see all my future videos as well. So for this, we're going to begin with an overlay of brown acrylic or whatever color you want the bulk of your clock to be. So I mean, it could be absolutely anything, but for me, I'm going to go with like a classic mahogany type brown. It's not quite as red as mahogany, but you know, you get the idea. So we're going to be doing that and then just applying a very thin layer over the whole thing. This one happens to have a little shimmer in it, which I think gives you kind of that really glossy wood look and I really enjoy that. And then I'm going to encapsulate it with a layer of clear acrylic to make sure that it is nice and strong. And then after you have that layer of clear, we're going to be filing it into shape with an e-file. I really like to use my e-file, especially for acrylic because it speeds up the filing process significantly. That being said though, I use a medium grit bit and I don't ever turn it up too terribly high. So it's almost more like I'm buffing the surface to smooth it out, if that makes sense. And then I'm going to use a narrow bit and I'm going to drill a hole right through about the center of the nail. And now I'm going to cut off a piece of wire that's, you know, fairly, it's, I think it's a 20 gauge wire. And I'm going to slide that through the hole and that's going to be the start of our pendulum and then cut off the extra if there is any, and then bend the part that's under the nail up so that you have um, a nice little almost U shape going for your wire. On the end that's underneath the nail, we're going to glue a bead to it so that you have a little bit of something to hold onto when you're making the pendulum move back and forth. And now we're going to start working on the actual frame of the clock face and the clock face. So I'm going to start with the same brown that I used for the overlay and I'm going to sculpt a fairly large round circle. You want your circle to be a little bit um, exaggeratedly large comparative to the size of the nail. I think it just gives the whole design a little bit more whimsy than if you made it just like the width of the nail. So I'll make it a little bit extra large and then just tuck in the size, try to get it to be as round and perfect as possible. And then after you have that, I'm going to switch to a darker shade of brown and I'm going to be sculpting a little frame around this beginning step of this. And there's so many different styles and eras of grandfather clocks that there's a lot of different options that you can really play around with. And even like I said before, you could switch up the color. It wouldn't have to be browns like this one is. In fact, the alarm clock I did was neon pink and I really like that one, but we can do all sorts of different things with this. And you know, there's grandfather clocks that have a square face and there's grandfather clocks that have a really, you know, a lot of decorative carving around the outside of them. And you could just play with this and have so much fun. So you don't have to feel like you're limited to this particular style. If you're thinking of recreating this, you can, you know, use this concept and just sort of let your imagination go wild. We're going to do that nice thin frame of a darker shade of brown going around. And you could switch this up to, you could do a lighter shade of brown for the frame instead of darker if you wanted. But after we have that frame sculpted and just kind of tuck it in all the way around, then you're going to want to go through and add some of those decorative details if you want to. So for me, I'm not going to go over the top of these. I don't want it to look uh, too, I don't know. I want to keep it kind of simple, I guess you could say. And so I'm just going to do a little bit on the bottom and create kind of like a base where this portion of the clock, the top frame of the clock would attach to where the pendulum is, even though ours is going to be slightly forward comparatively, but I'm gonna just add that little kind of block at the bottom. And then with my darker shade of brown, I'm going to add a couple of little swirly things at the top of it. Like I said, keeping mine pretty simple. I don't wanna overdo it. And you know, it's kind of, you know, a style, whatever style you're going for. So I'm just gonna do a little swirly at the very top of my clock, just a little bit, just to kind of, keep life interesting. And then after you have whatever of that swirly element you want sculpted in, then you can go through and you can start doing some of the details of the face of the clock. So you can do um, a white face in the middle of it. And if you don't want to sculpt that with acrylic, like, I don't know, sometimes I'm in the mood just to try to sculpt as much as I possibly can. And sometimes I'm not. So when you do go to fill in the face of your clock, you can decide how much you want to do with that. Just like with the frame, you can decide how much you really want to sculpt. So I also did a little bit of a brown line at the very bottom of that block 
at the with a darker shade of brown too. So after I have that, now I'm going to start doing the, the face with white acrylic. The benefits of doing the face with white acrylic versus trying to do it with a paint product is I actually think it's easier to get circular shapes with white acrylic or with acrylic, I guess, because you can kind of press it out until it hits the spot where you want it to. And then if it goes past it, you can just tuck it back in with your brush. Now that's my personal preference and opinion, but if you think it's easier to paint it, then there is no problem painting it too. It just kind of depends on your mood, I think as well. Cause sometimes, you know, you're, you got your acrylic out and just all, you know, ready to go. And sometimes you're like, ah, I'm just done with the acrylic for tonight. And so now with a, on a, uh, you know, a medium sized straw, we're going to be sculpting a ring of brown acrylic just to, just to create a spacer. That's all that this is acting as. And if you don't want to use, you know, this ring method, you could just put a couple little beads of acrylic on the back of your clock to create a little bit of height on it. But we do need to have a gap between the clock face and that frame area and the nail so that the pendulum has room to move underneath it. So after my ring has completely set up, I'm going to pop it off the straw and then I'm going to glue it onto the back of my clock with some of that lovely nail glue. And then I'm going to put some nail glue on the other end of the ring and then glue it to the nail above where the wire is for your pendulum. So that there's, as you can see, there's a gap between where the clock is and the pendulum is so that you have no worries of your pendulum getting stuck anywhere. And I'm going to secure the ring to the clock and to the nail with more of my darker shade of brown acrylic, just to make sure that everything is nice and secure and not going to break off anywhere. And at this point, I use the darker shade of brown. It doesn't really matter which one you use since it's you know, you're attaching the dark to the light. So whatever you feel like using pretty much. And then I'm going to slide a nail form backing underneath the wire and I'm going to sculpt the weight and the actual pendulum with gold acrylic. And the gold I'm using isn't a very metallic gold or a very bright gold. It's a very rich, soft, warm gold that I'm using. So it's, it's just kind of, a, I don't know, it reminds me of golden hair or something. It's just a nice, very complementary color to the rest of them in this nail so it's not going to stick out too much but it is brighter than the background color so we have that little weight which is basically just a bar shape around the piece of wire and then the pendulum is very easy it's just a circle on the end of the wire and hold that nail form backing in place on this until those bits are completely set up so don't try to pull that nail form backing out ahead of time because you may end up with some part of that pendulum getting stuck to the nail and not moving back and forth so after you have that done and it is completely loose from everything else then you're going to take some more of your gold acrylic and we're going to be sculpting the two weights that are on either side of the one in the middle so there's one on each side and these ones are a little bit lower on the nail than the one that's in the pendulum so they kind of go like down up down if that makes sense and so just kind of vary their height or I've seen grandfather clocks where they go up at an angle so you can that's another place where you can play around with it. And if you are thinking of doing this and you want to do some research on how to, you know, just different styles of grandfather clocks, if you just Google grandfather clocks in Google images, you'll find so many different varieties. There is just hundreds and hundreds of options and details that you can play around with. So now to write on my clock face, I'm going to be using Roman numerals and I'm not going to do all 12 numbers because there's just not that much space and I felt like it would get a little congested. So instead I did just the 12, 3, 6, and 9 places and added polka dots for the other ones and then you're going to go through and you're going to add your time on your clock. Make sure that your minute hand is longer than the hour hand. It's really tempting to make them the same length but you know, just try to keep them a little different. And then with some gold paint, I'm going to do just an outline between the clock face and the rest of the frame. And that'll kind of tie into that gold color that is on the weights in the pendulum down below. In fact, because my two golds were slightly different and I wanted them to be a little bit more uniform and matchy matchy, I went through and I painted over them too. But I'm going to take that gold and do just a little bit of highlighting on my frilly stuff that's on the frame of my clock just to bring it out a little bit. And then like I said, I'm going to paint over those weights and pendulum on the bottom. The color is very similar, but in person I could tell that they just weren't quite the same tone. So I decided it would be nice to quickly do that. And then to add the strings or the, the cord to the other weights, I'm going to take gray paint that'll kind of go with the silver of the wire and then just do ever so slight few outlines with some black paint. I didn't want to overdo it, but there's just some spots that I felt needed some outlining, especially around the weights. 
So you can go ahead and just outline the 3D weight and then on the cord for them, just do a thin line on one side. You don't have to worry about doing both sides with those. In fact, I think it looks better just having one side because it looks like it's more metallic almost. And then apply some gel sealer over the background. Do move the pendulum to one side and then gel sealer the opposite side and the clock face. Cure that after it's cured. Move the pendulum to the other side and then gel sealer over the side that is now available. Cure it again. Apply some matte top coat over the frame of your clock. And this nail is done. I absolutely love this one. I I love how like rich and classic it looks. And I am a sucker for all kinds of clocks. So I hope you guys love this one as much as I do. Like I've said before, if you do want to see some of my past clock videos, I do have them in the description box below. The alarm clock is one of my personal favorites because it is on a little spring. So it wiggles back and forth like it is shaking off a desk. And so yeah, that one's one of my absolute favorites. So check that out and I'll see you next time. Bye.